Welcome to Olive Branch Church, where our mission is to create a vibrant community that emphasizes enrichment, excellence, and fellowship. We are so excited that you have tuned into The Word Made Plain with Pastor Dr. Vincent L. Windrow Sr. today. We hope that you're impacted, empowered, and enlightened through the Word of God. Let's join Pastor Windrow as he delivers today's message. Good evening. It is evening. It's weird, but it, it is evening. This is the evening that the Lord has made. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study online. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm happy that I'm here. I'm happy that I'm happy that we're here. Please, please join me in prayer. God, we're so grateful that you are alive in our lives. God, that you are alive in your creation, that you are alive in the universe. God, we give you thanks and praise, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your loving kindness, for your tender mercies, God. And we thank you that you are still making ways out of no ways. You are still creating rivers in the desert, God, and you are still making ways through the thickest of things, through the thicket, God, through the, through the stuff that we cannot penetrate ourselves, God. You, you God, have a, have a great track record of, of doing just that. So we thank you for going before us, God, not just in geography, but going before us in time, God. Thank you for knowing our end from the very beginning. And so we give you thanks and praise for this day and for this opportunity to share your word and to share with your people. God, we thank you and we thank you and we thank you. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So welcome back. Welcome again. No, welcome. Just welcome. I'm excited. This is our very first live stream uh, Bible study. And so I am, I am uh, uh, grateful that you're here and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Uh, so let's, let's get right down to business if, if you don't mind. So I want to do something special tonight from the top and we'll continue to do it, but it will be in, de in a decreasing manner because we won't have as much uh, in the following Wednesdays, I don't believe. But, but, but what I would like to do is something called the pastor's inbox. Now, I've received numerous emails with, with various questions, and so I want to take a, a small space of time to answer those questions. I've, I've combined some of the questions, but, but they are really relevant questions, so, so thank you, and God bless you for sending those questions in. This segment is called the Pastor's Inbox. Okay, question number one. How long will we only have online service? Great question. Everybody wants to know that. Well, here's the skinny. A couple of days ago, we sent out a social media uh, post uh, that said we were not going to have service for the next two weeks. I have some updated guidance on that based on what is now coming out or has come out from the CDC and based on what President Trump uh, is seeking to implement. So for the next month, the entirety of April, we will not have church service on site. Now, we don't know what happens after that. We will continue to, to, to listen and we will continue to obey. Not only will we promote these practices, but we will practice these practices. We will do what needs to be done. This has become a far, a far greater crisis than anyone could have anticipated. And it's going to take all of us, not just some of us, but it's going to take each of us to help all of us. And we are, again, we are linked together somehow, and it's become more and more evident that we are linked. And I've said it for years that somehow I'm linked to you and somehow you're linked to me and I can't go nowhere without you and you can't go anywhere without me. Well, the fact of the matter, the truth is we are linked and we need each other. What? To survive. I need you to get somewhere and stay. You need me to get somewhere and stay. No frolicking. You have to hunker down. You have to get home and stay there. It's, it's not, this is not something that we can play with. You've seen the numbers. And this thing is so serious because if you come into contact with someone, 
then you go take that back home with you or they take it back home with them. The only way to decrease the spread that we can help with, right, is to not spread it. So that means that we must stay where we are. I know, I know, I know you get antsy, but, but consider this a special calling on your life, or this is a special dis dispensation that you can show your obedience, that, that, that you can humble yourself, that you can help. This is how all of us can help. We need each other to survive. We have to have you and you have to have me doing what needs to be done. This is no plaything. Please, brother. Please, sister. Stay. If you care, stay where you are. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. We, we, we had a great turnout today and, and we... Uh, exercised caution at, at, at the feeding of the 300 and, and we could do that again next week but we want why because we must make sure that as these new guidelines come out that we follow them that we adhere to them and that we show other people how serious of a matter this really is and so we have to without a doubt stay where we are Stay in. Number two, how many members have contracted the virus? As you, if you're watching cable news or any type of news, really, or any type of media, you've seen the escalating numbers, the increase in cases, the increase in deaths, the increases in, in how many people have recovered. So it is, so, so it is here that we are part of this world. We live in this world. And so we contract viruses. We have cancer. We have diseases. We have high blood. We have all of that. And, and, and so it is that there, are, uh, there is a growing number of members in our church who have contracted the disease. And so we, we continue to pray with them. I, I, I said, I don't know, maybe it was two weeks ago on the first broadcast, or maybe it was one of those uh, uh, Pastor Vinny hotlines, but three things. We always have something to pray for, always. We always have someone to pray for, and we always have someone to pray to. Yes, we always have someone to pray to. We always have someone to pray for, and we always have something to pray for. Use the power of prayer. Question number three. Are you still officiating weddings? No, I am not. I would love to. I, I, I consider the wedding ceremony a sacred opportunity that we would bear witness uh, to the world of, of love between a man and a woman, beginning to be husband and wife. But this thing is so serious that I don't want to jeopardize the lives of other folk by officiating weddings. Number four, will we have the choir for live stream broadcasts? Gotten this question a lot. This, 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 is a, this is a popular question. Here's the thing. We have a bare bone staff right now. It's, it's bare bone. It's only me and the production crew in this sanctuary right now. Why? Because it's important that just like we're not inviting you into the sanctuary, we don't want to invite the praise team or the choir into the sanctuary either. We want to make sure that we can maintain distance. And so we don't, we don't want to jeopardize. And, and we are handling this with these production folk in here. We are handling, handling this with a great, de great deal of discretion and safety. Everybody's spraying. Everybody, I had my mask on before uh, this, this event came on. And so we want to make sure we maintain distance. And yet, we have gotten used to this high level of music ministry and so what we're going to do and starting this Sunday we, we're going to dip into the archives 
and, and bless, bless you with the music ministry. I, 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 I know you're going to be blessed. So wait, wait for that on Sunday. Question number five. Can life groups meet virtually? Oh, absolutely. We want our life groups to continue to meet, but do not meet in person. Do not gather together. I don't care how many of you it is. If it's five, if it's four, if it's three, if it's two, we do not want you gathering together. But virtually, absolutely, yes. As a matter of fact, Minister Fred Tyus, Brother Tyus, his group, the life, men's life group in Murfreesboro, they're meeting virtually. Question number six, are we canceling summer programs? We are canceling what we know we cannot put together as of right now. So, for example, we're can we've canceled the boost program. Hurt me to my heart. But here is the thing. We must sacrifice. We don't want to jeopardize the lives of those 180, 180 students, those participants who can then transport or, 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 or give that to infect uh, their loved ones at home or even themselves. And so we have canceled booths. We also have canceled our annual prayer breakfast. That has become a huge hit with our folks and in the community. It brings so many different type of people into our church and we, we promote the power of prayer and, and yet we, we, had, we have to cancel it. And so we'll, we'll, we're continuing to look even farther down the road at, at how this virus is impacting lives. This, this is the deal. All of us will not be infected by the virus, but all of us will be impacted by the virus in many similar and sometimes different ways. All of us will not be infected, but all of us, believe you me, all of us will be impacted. We are impacted right now. So, yes, we are canceling the, the programs in this time frame. Question number seven. I gave my offering through Cash App, but it was returned. What should I do? Thank you so very much for this great for this great question. When we opened up the cash app, there was a, a flood of successful transactions. This past Sunday, however, we witnessed that some became pending. And so we reached out to cash app and what they wanted to do, because it was a new account, and, and they were unfamiliar with who we were. They wanted to make sure that we were somebody and, and that uh, it was all legitimate. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go back in right now, right now, and resend your offering. Resend your tithe right back through Cash App because now we should be open for business. As a matter of fact, our finance team is on the alert right now, making sure that as you send it, that it gets accepted and that it goes through. Thank you for your faithfulness in that regard. God bless you. Resend it. I'm talking about push the button. Hit that cash app right now. Question number eight. If I need assistance, who should I call? Con please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to call on the deacons. Your deacon, call on, call on the church. The number is still the same, 615-941-1268. Reverend Donna Morgan is still answering that phone call, and we're, and we're getting assistance to people who need it. So please, brother and sister, contact your deacon, contact the church, and we will respond. Number nine, are the ministers still praying for us? Absolutely. Before I came on live, I texted, uh, 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 Reverend Deborah Sandlin and I said, hey, are the ministers, y'all still praying? She says, oh yes, we're still praying. We're not going to faint. We're not going to give in. We're not going to give up. We're going to pray without ceasing so that you know, again, that every member of this church is being prayed for by the ministers at 7 o'clock each morning. We're covering, covering the entire congregation with prayer. Everyone is part of a segmented age group. And we have a minister praying for this age group, another minister praying for this age group, another minister praying for this age group, another minister praying for this age group. The congregation is segmented by 
age groups. And so we have a minister praying, praying, pleading the blood of Jesus on every, every person, every segment, every age group in this church. So yes, question number 10, will you still eulogize members who transition? I absolutely will. I absolutely I will. And I don't want that to happen, of course, but I, I, I will continue to eulogize members. As a matter of fact, I talked to one of our members who owns a um, funeral home, and, and uh, she said that she is making sure that there are no more than 10 people in, 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 a, in a funeral at, at one time. So she is, she is being governed by the same guidance that we are. And we, don't want, we want to make sure that we uh, uh, practice, again, what we are promoting. Here's another one. How weird is it to preach to an empty sanctuary? <laughs> well, let, let me tell you, the first Sunday was like really super duper weird. It, I mean, it was weird beyond weird. And, and, and as a matter of fact, before we went live this evening, I was talking to the cameraman and I was saying, hey, you know, I, 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 I am still turning as if people are still seated in, in these pews. This is a beautiful sanctuary, but no one is sitting in the pews, but I'm still turning as if someone is sitting right there, the deacons are sitting right there, or the deacons are sitting right here, the deaconesses are right here, or the ministers are right there, or y'all are out there, or, or uh, I haven't turned around yet and, and, and preached to the choir, but it, it is a, it's, a, it's a different thing, and I, I, I felt like I got better at it last Sunday, but I tell you what, it is something, so uh, it, it is really weird. Now, here, here is the last question. For, for tonight in the pastor's inbox. And, and this is the question. What's been the toughest part for you as pastor? So, and, and, I, and I've told some of you this before, that administrating, the administration part of the pastoral calling of a church that is this large, this active, um, this passionate about her purpose, two locations, which means two communities with uh, feeding programs and help programs in South America and on, on the continent of Africa. It, it, it is far beyond the street that, that uh, our buildings are on. So, so the administration, the, the, the operations, the functionality, um, leading the staff, all, all of that is a part of uh, the pastor's role and the, and the pastor's responsibility. The giving part, we, we, our, our giving is, is down somewhere between 30 and 35 percent and that has to come up. And, and I, am, am I prayerful about that? Oh, yes, I am. Because you need to know that we are being good stewards of what we have, even when there is a decrease in what we have. So I encourage you, brother and sister, to, to give, to send it in, to cash app it, to go online. There's a secure uh, connection online. Uh, people have been given online to this church for a great number of years. So, so yes, I, I am concerned about your having a church to come back to and being able to function and operate at the highest level, the level that you're used to. So, but in all of that weighs, all of that weighs on me. And yet, it's, it's helping you. It's the weight of the sheep. It's, it's your anxieties, it's your fears, it's, it's your sickness, it's, it's what's weighing you down. It's, it's figuring, figuring out or, or listening to, to God to the degree that I hear where the green pastures are, where, where, I, where, where I, I hear and able to lead you beside the still waters. It's, it's, that's the toughest part of pastoring. It's, it's, it's what keeps me up at night. It, it's what 
causes me to cry. It's what causes me to fear, right? It's, it's knowing one of your members is in the hospital with pneumonia and the virus, and you text, and she responds that she is fighting for, she said, Pastor, I am fighting for my life, and I know that I'm not alone. That, that is the hardest part of pastoring that's ever been. Beyond the building of buildings, beyond the expansion of, mi of ministries, beyond any of that, above, so far and beyond, is that we're our folk. And, and, and I know to a large degree that I am responsible for taking care of you. That is, that is the toughest part, and yet at the same time, that's the most exhilarating part because I love to hear your stories. That, you, your stories are, are so important. Think, think about it. Your stories, stories of the believers are so important that the writer of Hebrew dedicated an entire chapter, an entire chapter to the stories of people. So I love to hear your stories of triumph. I love, I, I love to hear your stories even when you're fearful but, because all of us, all of us can become afraid. All of us can become anxious. So, so that is the toughest part. And yet I know that our Redeemer lives. I, I know that God still is, is God and he is still alive. And so we, we, we get to where we are by holding on to what holds us together. By holding on. Is it a scripture? Hold on to that scripture and, 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 and go look for some more. Hold, hold on. Is it a song? Yes. Hold on to that song and get you another one. Hold on to what holds you together. Jesus did not tell Peter that he prayed that he would not go through. Jesus says, I prayed that your faith would not fail, that you would hold on to what you believe, that you would hold on to what holds you together. I was talking to one of the members today and she asked me, did I know that song that says, if the storms don't cease and if the winds keep on blowing in my life, that my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Yeah, Woo. That, that holds you together because guess what? This thing may go on longer than any one of us can imagine. And yet we still need to hold on to God's unchanging hand. We still need to hold on to scripture. We still need to hold on to those songs that speak of how mighty and powerful our God is. So, we have to match the moment. So I'm calling on you for you to call on our God that you will be strengthened that he would minister to you, that you would match this moment. Got it. Okay, so do you have your Bibles? Do you have your Bibles? Do you have your Bibles on your phones, on your laptops? Let's, let's, let's turn to Job, if you would, your, your, your brother Job. Job 3.25. Job 3.25. Job speaking. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Th this verse says the same thing. The, the second part of the verse just amplifies, it just em emphasizes really what the first part of the verse says. That that, that both the verse is saying the same thing. Now there has been great uh, uh, wrestling, if you would, with this text. A couple of schools of thought. One, one is that what Job is saying was, was that the thing that he had always feared the thing that he, had, he, he was always apprehensive about, that somewhere in his 
mind that Job feared what took place in his life. You know, you know, you know what happened, don't you? It's 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 it's, it's back here in in in, in Job one. It starts at uh, Job one thirteen. That things began to happen. The oxen were killed, the donkeys, the sheep, the servants, the camels, the, his sons and daughters. Everything wiped out. The first school of thoughts suggests that <clears throat> Job. Somehow, even during his most prosperous times, there was, there was this gnawing feeling inside of him that he somehow knew that he feared that something like this was going to happen, that he was going to lose everything. That, that's one school of thought, that, that somehow, even when Job was at his happiest and most prosperous that when Job had it going on like no one else, that at, at his highest points in life, there was still something inside of him that, that said, wait a minute, Job, don't get too high because there's going to come a day that you're going to lose it all. That's one school. There's another school of, of thought that, that suggests that the first school of thought is, is off. The second school of thought says that there's no way that Job could have fathomed, could have imagined that he would have faced the adversity and the calamity that he faced. When his oxen were taken, when his donkeys and sheep and servants and camels and his sons and his daughters died, the second school of thought says there ain't no way Job could have anticipated that. He could not have been apprehensive about that because he could not have imagined such a horrible, incredibly bad thing could have happened. But here is what this second school of thought does say. It says that during this time that he was speaking, that Job was so bombarded not by the totality of it, but that when one thing happened, he didn't have time to catch his breath. Then another thing happened because one servant would come and say, Job, they got your oxen and your donkeys. And then another, before he could respond, then another servant who had escaped would come and say, Job, now they got your sheep. And then another servant would come and say, oh God, Job, I was there. And they, they, the, 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 the enemy fell down and killed all the servants and I was the only one. And then the, your camels, and then the final one was uh, your, your folk, your sons and your daughters, they were killed. The second school of thought says that the, the, the rapid fire of these events is what Job was fearing because when one thing happened, he didn't have time to respond to that one thing because the next thing happened and then the next thing happened and the next thing happened and the next and the next and the next and the next thing happened. And while he was fearing that the next thing was going to happen, the thing that he feared actually happened. That during this time that he was facing this great calamity, and adversity that Job said, the thing that I feared the most actually did happen. It, nowadays, it seems like more and more news is coming at us. More and more bad news is, is coming at us. Italy. Spain, it's, it's coming at us. What's happening in, in New Orleans? What's happening in New York City? What's happening in Detroit now? What's happening in Chicago now? What's happening around in the United States? It seems like it's coming at us with rapid fire speed. And we, by the time we, we say, oh my goodness, we have to say, oh my goodness, again, breaking news 
a record number of deaths by COVID-19 has, has been reported in the United States. It seems like we can't catch our breath. We, how, how do you catch up with all the bad news when you can't even catch your breath? Job, like us, or we, like Job, faced this rapid, rapid fire succession of bad news. President Trump said yesterday, said it again today, that for the next two weeks, it's going to be tough times, very tough times. I encourage you to continue to match the moment that you bring all the faith that you can muster in our God and you bring it to every moment that you can, that you don't leave anything behind you, but that you pick up all the faith that you have and you bring it to each and every moment in your mind. Use your memory, ask the Holy Ghost to bring it back to your remembrance what God has done in your past, the stories that you have, have, have heard, the, the, the stories in the Bible that you have read, the testimonies that have been shared with you, ask the Holy Ghost to bring it back to your remembrance in your mind so that you won't forget, so that you won't forget. Match the moment, not just with your mind, match the moment with your mouth. Speak good things. Bring glad tidings. Recite the promises of God. Speak life. Speak fulfillment. Speak deliverance. Speak over your families. Pray over your families. Speak recovery. Speak full strength. Speak wisdom. Make sure that not only your mind, but make sure that your mouth, that it matches the moment that we are in. Make sure that your mood matches the moment. Make sure that, that your mood, how you feel and how you express yourself. It was just last Sunday that I encouraged you to mention what's going on around us and in your lives, but don't mope about it. You'll find yourself pushing yourself down. So you have to lift yourself up, encourage yourself in the Lord, and make sure that you bring a mood to the moment that matches the moment. And when I say match, I'm not saying that is, that is the same as the moment, but in terms of strength, in terms of need, Make sure that you, your mind matches the moment, your mouth matches the moment, and your mood matches the moment. God bless you. Again, all of us won't be infected, but all of us will be impacted. Ne next time, next Wednesday, I'll have a, a whiteboard. We'll move this pulpit and I'll have a whiteboard up here and I'll draw some pictures and I'll give you some terms and we'll share. You can write all this down. It'll be a fun time in the Lord. But for tonight, I wanted to share what was in my inbox. But more importantly, I wanted to share what was on my heart. I love you. You love you. And you love others enough that you would stay in, that you would call upon your God, that you would speak the names of those who are sick and afflicted in prayer, that you would hold on to what holds you together, that you would hold on to God's unchanging hand, and that you would bring the right mind to this moment, that you would bring the right mouth to this moment, that you would bring the right mood to this moment. God bless you. 
I would like to close with prayer that we would call upon the name of our God together. That we would solicit, that we would plead, that we would ask him, that we would make our requests known unto him, that we, he would know what we need, what we're facing, and how we feel. Feel it. Don't deny what you feel. Feel it. Don't ignore what you feel. Feel it. In Jesus' name. Come, let us pray together. God, not unto ourselves, because we have no might, God. We have no power. We have no wherewithal. Without you, God, we have no answers, no solutions, no remedies, no bombs. But with you, God, in you, God, we find stability and security. So it is not unto us, but it is, God, it is unto you, O oh, great God. You who have lifted up our heads before, you who have given ease to our troubled minds before, you who love our souls, and it is unto you, God, powerful one, the most high God, we call on you to bless us. We call on you, God, to deliver us. We call on you, God, to meet us where we are, God, to meet us at our fear, to meet us at our doubt, God, to meet us at our anxiety, to meet us, meet us where we are, God. In the name of Jesus. And when you meet us where we are, bless us where we are, God. Heal us where we are. Strengthen us, God, right where we are. In Jesus' name, God. Go to where your folk are, God. Help with their fevers and their aches and their chills, their doubts, God. Help those who are helping us the caretakers, the professional staff, God, those who are working on the front line, those even as they're taking care of people, God, take care of them. Heal them, God, some of them, and taking care of others, God. They have contracted the virus as well. Touch their bodies, God. God, we celebrate their desire to help, but God, you know what's best for them. Touch them. Touch their families, God. It's in our present future. When this crisis will end, but we do know, God, you are yet alive in this crisis. So we don't play stupid or foolish we know where our help comes from. Our help comes from you. Be with us. Watch over us. Take care of us as only you can. In the name of the one who is your only begotten son. In the name of the one who came to this earth. In the name of the one who was crucified, dead and buried. In the name of the one God who you raised from the dead. In the name of the one who now sits at your right hand making intercession for us. In the name of that one, we submit this prayer in faith. And we praise you in advance for the manifestation of your glory in the lives of those, in the hospitals, in the lives of those, in the ambulances, on their way to the hospitals, in the lives of those who have lost the lives of their loved ones. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we praise. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday.
and then back here on Wednesday until we meet again. God be with you. Good night. You've been listening to The Word Made Plain with Pastor Dr. Vincent L. Windrow, Jr. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you right here next week. For questions about this broadcast or general questions about our church, call us at 615-941-1268 or email us at churchofmen at olivebranchchurch.org.